Good morning, Titans, and welcome to the intro edition of Titan Television. I'm Julia Williams. And I'm Grace Hill. On this episode, we'll get a look at some popular trends. And you'll also get an inside look at some certain freshman athletes around the school. All this and more on this intro edition of Titan Television. <laughs> Summer West are filled with talent. Brooklyn Martin shows us one sophomore who takes her talent to a whole new level. Sophomore Katie Baker started dancing at the age of four and fell in love with the art. Now Baker is more committed than ever. I dance so I can express myself because it's really hard to express myself through school because I'm so shy. But when I dance, I'm not shy. I've been working with Katie Baker since she was seven. Um, she, I think even before that even, I think I was an assistant in one of her first little preschool classes and she was this like sassy little spitfire who didn't always do the right things and the right steps, but you could tell she had a ton of potential to be great. After years of mentoring Baker at Steppin' Out, Brooke is now coaching her on the West Side Girls dance team. I love West Side Girls because of all the girls on it. We're all like really close and it's just like a really like good community to be a part of. Katie brings a ton of emotion and performance. Um, she can connect with almost any piece of music immediately and then she owns it. Um, she also brings wonderful technique to our team um, and she's really starting to develop as a leader on our squad as well. She trains over 20 hours a week and spends her summers training at various conventions. Baker plans to follow her dreams and have a career in the arts. I could honestly see her performing in music videos um, I could also see her performing on Broadway, but either way, I know she'll be a part of a dance company, a professional company, and she'll be performing. Burke has some advice for Baker, as well as other dancers needing a few words of wisdom. To follow your dreams, so don't be timid. If you really want to go and live in New York, then go and, and do that. Don't um, just stay back or settle for anything. Baker's hard work is paying off, and she is achieving her goals one at a time. With photographer Zoe Reiner, this is Brecklin Martin reporting for Titan TV. Good luck to everyone who's trying out this week. From dancing shoes to movie reviews, entertainment can come in many forms. Holland Colclager gives us top summer movies you can't miss. School will be out soon and there are plenty of movies coming out for the summer. We exist. We don't know what made stand. The ocean. I've never seen it. Marvel brings the Guardians of the Galaxy back to the movie screens with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 on May 5th. The Guardians try to keep their newly found family together while Mysteries of Peter Quill's true percentage is discovered. Bradshaw Sun is going down right here in the beautiful California IA. On May 12th, Lowriders, a film about a boy in California who fixes cars with his dad, who is also a graffiti artist, gets caught. This is my whole world. My nurse, my mom, my sickness. I'm 18 and I've never been outside. If I did, I would probably die. This next movie is based on the book Everything Everything and comes out on May 19th starring Amandala Stenberg. The film's about a teenage girl who must stay inside because she is allergic to everything. She starts to fall for the boy next door and must decide if she should risk her life for him. Never let your guard down. You expect the battle to be fair! Until this next film is for those who love action and adventure. Wonder Woman comes out on June 2nd. It is a story of Wonder Woman's past and how she became the powerful woman she is. It Comes at Night is a horror mystery coming out on June 9th. There is a threat that terrorizes the world. And a man's relationship with his wife and son are put to the test when a family in desperate need of help are seeking refuge. There are some other movies premiering this summer. I'm Holland Colclasure reporting for Titan Television. And now we'll send it over to Cody Ball with Titan Sports Update.
afternoon, Titans. I'm Cody Ball. Today we'll get you all up to date on how the spring sports are preparing for their season. The baseball and track teams are both getting ready for a successful season. Here's a little more on how both teams are doing. The girls track team started their season strong at the Pirate Invitational with 11 event wins. The boys started their season falling behind with only two event wins. The varsity girls track team traveled to Arcadia, California for the Arcadia Invite. They took first in the discus, second in the sprint medley relay, fourth in the 4x200, and fifth in the high jump. Even though the boys team is off to a slow start, they are expected to finish the season strong. Next up to the plate is the Titan boys baseball team. Recently, the team has hit a rough patch, losing two big games against Crosstown rivals Lee Summit High School and Lee Summit North. Their next game is Friday at 4 against Truman High School, where the Titans look to get their season back on track. With photographer Candy Kavinsky, this is Cody Ball, reporting for Titan Sports Update. With a more in-depth look at the girls' varsity soccer team, here's Abby Rasmussen. Recently, with the help of Coach Sean Owens, the girls' soccer team kicked off the season with an 11-1 win against Ray Pet. It's a team in the sense that everybody contributes. There's not one person that's outscoring the other. With a bright future ahead, the team has set a unique goal for the upcoming season. We have a challenge uh, to our team that we're gonna, we don't want to lose any more than three games. However, this isn't the only goal that they are trying to achieve. Of course, State's the first one. We want to win pink out. And we, of course, we want to win our district, and that's how you get to State. This is Abby Rasmussen reporting for Tyne Sports Update. This year's golf team is young compared to other seasons. However, led by lone senior Logan Dahmer, they have high expectations. Here's Sydney Parker with the story. Recently, I had the opportunity to sit down with boys junior varsity golf coach Brett Wagner and senior Logan Dahmer to talk about the upcoming boys golf season. As spring rolls around, weather has been less than ideal for the boys golf team. Despite the rough start, the team has been looking to senior Logan Dahmer to lead the way. When I miss the green, I feel like I have a pretty good short game to get up and down. Um, and I know Parker's really good off the tee. Um, James, James seems to take, um, he, he seems to make some pretty long putts. So uh, overall as a team, we, we have some good contributions. Assistant Coach Wagner also sees the potential in this young team. We've got a couple of kids that, uh, that went to state last year, uh, Logan Dahmer and James O'Connor. Parker Jones also is uh, going to be a big contributor uh, to the golf team as well. So I, I think that uh, our expectations are um, to get as many guys, especially those three, to state this year and uh, hopefully contend for a state, state title. Dahmer has high hopes for his final season. I expect to win conference as a team, and personally, I um, have the goal of placing uh, the top 15 all stated um, at state. For Titan Sports Update, this is Sydney Parker reporting. The boys' varsity tennis team has struggled so far this season, having played multiple close matches but not coming out on top. They look to bounce back tonight against Liberty at four. Now for the rest of Titan Sports Update. I swing it over to Candy Kavinsky. Thanks, Cody. Most freshman athletes don't make varsity teams. However, the baseball team has a few freshmen dressing out and earning playing time this year. Here's Julia Williams with the story. Now that spring is finally here, baseball is in full swing, and a few boys have already hit it out of the park. The freshmen, um, they happen to be dressing and playing on the varsity squad this year. Um, probably one of the biggest things is timing is everything. Um, we were looking for some key spots. Um, they happen to be right there at the right time. It does say something to have not maybe one, but to have a couple um, that are able to compete and produce and be successful at the varsity baseball level here at West, is that's, that's an accomplishment. Griffin Henry, Trevor Cardell, and Sammy Cooper may be the youngest players on the field, but watching them play, you would never know. Like in Griffin's case was as knowledge-based at shortstop. You know, it's a very important position, even with Trevor, um, with uh, even in the position. You know, primarily we were looking at him a lot as, as a pitcher. He's shown that he's, he's uh, very exceptional at first base, moves very well, got very good hands, very good instincts, and uh, uh, swings a pretty good bat. Recently, Cardell and Henry traveled to Surprise, Arizona for the Royals spring training. Our baseball coach is Dayton Moore. He's the general manager for the Royals and 
he's one of the coaches and so we just got some inside access down there yeah it was definitely fun uh it was my first year with the team it's more of a bonding experience to get with all the guys and kind of meet them this exposure is one of the reasons coach meyer is very positive about his young team our goal is always to make it to the final four and win that last game of the year i do you know, i think we got a chance always with photographer Lily Brayton, this is Julia Williams reporting for Titan Sports Update. It may not be considered an official sport here at West, but lacrosse is still very close to many hearts around the school, including talented freshmen on both the girls' and boys' side. Ari Tolbert has more. The coaches have known me since I was little, so they know what I'm capable of, so they push me to be the best I can be. Me practice with them and play with them in tournaments, and now, at being a freshman, I made varsity. In the cases where I've had freshmen play varsity, it's because they are extremely talented and they earned their way into the rosters. They make me feel very welcome being a freshman on varsity, and they trust me just as much as everyone else. Coach Hertzler already sees great potential in Cobbett. Danielle's got the skill set to get to the collegiate level. It's just a matter of you know who's going to be interested in her and who offers her a scholarship. With photographer Claire Gregory, this is Ariana Tolbert reporting for Titan Sports Update. After losing some key seniors last year, coach Jay Coleman is looking to younger talent like freshman Michael Barr to fill bigger roles. I think the best thing about Michael is his personality. And I mean, he's funny, he's engaging, he, um, he acts, I mean, he acts like a freshman, but he, he can hold a conversation, he likes to talk, he's, he's, he's positive on the field in terms of being a communicator. Love the game, I like playing it. Just love being out there and the brotherhood that I have with my teammates. We're really close-knit, we hang out together, we eat together a lot. And... However, transitioning into a high school while being a varsity athlete can be a challenge. Uh, a lot of what I do is I'll go from practice to practice and I'll stay up doing homework until like 10 o'clock. But... It's important that the kids understand that you know it's a privilege to do these things, not a right. So it's important for them to get good grades. And Barr has been balancing it well. A little tentative, but you know, every game he's getting better and more confident. With photographer Joey Paxson, this is Jason Mann reporting for Titan Sports Update. The boys lacrosse team has been up and down this season, but they look to continue their current win streak with the game against Northland tonight at 7. While many games for the girls have been rained out, the girls team is undefeated after the first win in Titan girls lacrosse history against Scion. They look to keep the strong start going Monday against Shawnee Mission at 7. That's it for the intro edition of Titan Sports Update. Back to Julie and Grace in the studio. And while some students are focused on the ball, others are focused on the cube. Jenna Tiedemann has the story. The fidget cube is a six-sided stress and anxiety relieving toy that is made for anyone who cannot stand still. This handheld toy was created by two brothers who ended up making millions off of this anti-stress device. All six sides feature different calming gadgets. The spin, the roll, the breathe, the flip, the glide, and the click. I walked around the halls of West to ask students which side is their favorite. I like the light switch side because of the noise that it makes. I like the ball and the wheels because it clicks and rolls so it's like several things in one. The switch because it makes the clicky noise and you can just sit there and do that all day. Yeah. As you can tell, the fidget cube and its unique sides are pretty popular here at West. I will be rating the cube over three categories, quietness, portability, and usefulness using a five-star system. While the fidget cube is mostly silent, one side is too loud to fidget with in class. For quietness, I give the cube three stars. The fidget cube is small, lightweight, durable, and perfect to carry around in your pocket or backpack. For portability, I give the fidget cube five stars. The cube helps alleviate some of that boredom. It's perfect to keep those fidgety hands occupied. For usefulness, I give the fidget cube four stars. The cube can be bought for $22 on its Kickstarter page. I'm Jenna Tiedemann, reporting for Titan Television. Next, Lily Brayton tells us about another popular trend among students. Grace Hill and I hit the halls of West to see how hard it is for students and teachers to speak out. Bow tie pasta and meat sauce. Bow tie uh, pasta is delicious. Yeah. Bow tie pasta yeah. and meat sauce is delicious. Yep. Fried pickles. Fried pickles. And ice cream. And ice cream. There's it! 
Aidney, 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 Marbles. Marbles. My marbles got robbed. Yeah. Yeah, you're awful at this game. It made me. It made me? E-I-N-N-S. Eat. I. 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 My. N-N-S. In the m and Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fuck. Wolfgang fuck. Flings. Eat. Fiercely. Flings meat. Fiercely. Yes! Yes! <laughs> You're good. <laughs> I mean, it's photographer Grace Hill. I'm Lily Brayton, reporting for Titan Television. Before this school year ends, there are plenty of goodbyes to be said. Celeste Martel tells us how one teacher is leaving his legacy behind. Kurt Mosier will be saying goodbye to his fellow Titans this year. After 31 years of teaching, he has made his mark on many students. Mr. Mosier has just been so much more than a teacher for all of us. He puts a lot of pressure on us to make sure that, you know, we're doing the, the best that we can um, and always progressing. Well, I can tell you what I'm not looking forward to. I'm not, I, I'm going to miss the students really bad. Though he might be leaving teaching, he's not leaving music. What I'll be doing in retirement is uh, a lot of writing. Uh, I have three, three new commissions that I picked up for next year already this week and uh, conducting different places around the world. Even with all of this, Mosier plans on leaving at least one day of the week open. Thursdays I get to take my granddaughter to the zoo. With photographer Keely Pine, this is Celeste Martell reporting for Titan Television. But Mosier isn't the only teacher retiring this year. Caroline Garrison tells us more. As the 2017 school year is coming to a close, we say goodbye to a few fellow Titan teachers. In his 31 years of teaching, Robert Clausing has taught painting, drawing, ceramics, and IB visual arts. In addition to coaching track and field, football, and wrestling, he will miss the interactions with young people and watching them succeed. He's taught us to explore something we're not familiar with and expand our boundaries in terms of art, and even not art, just like academics in general. Cynthia Dinker has taught American history for 25 years. She is looking forward to spending more time with her grandchildren. Julie Hume has been teaching for 29 years. During her career, she has taught gifted education, German, world history, philosophy, and theory of knowledge. She's excited to try new things and further pursue her love for music. For Lisa McWayne, English has been her specialty for 36 years. She will miss that light bulb moment students get when they make a connection. These teachers have made a great impact on West, and we wish them the best of luck. With photographer Grace Gowart, this is Caroline Garrison reporting for Titan Television. And while these careers are coming to a close, some are just beginning. Hunter Milner tells us more. With graduation approaching, most students are preparing for college. However, two students are gearing up for the armed forces. I decided to join the Marine Corps about six years ago. I didn't exactly do anything about it the first few years, but when I got serious about it and knew that it's something that I wanted to do, then I took it to a new level. Senior Sam Hill and Luigi Cariaga have spent the last four years in the ROTC program and have decided to make a career of it. You set them all down. You set them all down. I, I never really had anything to go off of. I never really had anything to guide me. And now that I have this like picture perfect me that I want to be, that it's right there for me to take, I'm going to do everything I can to get it. Senior Master Sergeant Nieves and Senior Airman Nick Mann have first-hand experience about what this career is like. Expect to, to work a lot and, and have to prove yourself because they're going to expect a lot from you. Let's go! You have to go where the military sends you. Um, sometimes you have to do jobs that, well, um, you really don't want to do. Despite the amount of training, the two realized they can never truly be prepared. I mean, it's 13 weeks of literally going through everything possible that could break you, make you cry, you know, push you to your limits. There, there's nothing you can do to prepare for it, but I feel like I'm doing everything 
I can to help me along in that situation. I just put in the hours of work that I need to and just to help me prepare for boot camp. I would say I'm most afraid of losing people, people that I will grow with, people that I will have bonds with. And I know it's going to happen at some point with what I want to do. There's no stopping it. I make a lot of friends and I'd hate to lose them. That is that is my one and only fear. But despite the hardships, man knows how to stay positive. Remember why you, you wanted to join the military in the first place? Because there's, there's going to have days where you know, you're just not going to want to do it or you're, you're going to have troubles. With photographers Nathan Miller and Dylan Mann, this is Hunter Milner reporting for Titan Television. Before this interedition of Titan TV ends, we have a few announcements to make. Recently, we crowned the new Mr. Titan. Congratulations to Talbot Buford for being named the 2017 Mr. Titan. We would also like to congratulate Cool Yarbrough, who was named Mr. Congeniality, Zach Andrews was named Mr. Competitive, and Cole Taylor was named Mr. Entourage for selling the most tickets. April 19th is all school testing day for freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. Seniors will be spending the day at the zoo. And don't forget, the last A-plus training day of the school year will be held April 25th at 2.35 p.m. in Bateman Hall. That's all we have for this edition of Titan Television. I'm Julia Williams. And I'm Grace Hill. Enjoy your three-day weekend, Titans!